Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The Mondays are putting some stank on it tonight. Yeah. Sounding good. Mm, so much stank. Uh, we want to thank our live studio audience here at the Jeffrey Theater. Thank you so much for supporting tonight in San Diego. We're going to give away some prizes to them like these. We've got a couple of uh, uh, gift certificates to Handel's Ice Cream in Encinitas, the best ice cream in San Diego. And if you want to win prizes like that, just get your tickets to our show at tonightinsandiego.com. Our next guest was uh, credited with putting London's fashion scene on the map in the 70s. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome fashion designer Dame Zandra Rhodes. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing the show. We, Lovely we're to be so here. happy to have you here. Uh, this is our first ever Dame. Uh, on the show. <laughs> We've tried. <laughs> sure. We've tried. Uh, now, just so I get it right, the, it's, the title is Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire, which you were given by Queen Elizabeth herself. That is amazing. In fact, I think we even have a photo of that. So what, is that, what does that mean? Did she knight you? Did she have a sword? And uh, the women don't get a sword anymore. Oh. The men get a cushion and a sword. Men get you know, a cushion and, she... and a sword. Oh, did you at least get a corgi? No, I didn't get a corgi. I get two very big, great big jewels that are very oh, nice that they great. pin to you. Did you get to see the corgis at least? No, you don't see any corgis. They're, they're hidden on that day. Oh, that's, that's kind of disappointing. <laughs> no corgis, but she got to see the queen. That's true. <laughs> I mean, that's... you know, how, what was that experience like? Oh, it's, it's quite amazing. You get, there's all the different orders, like the, the dame and the lords are the top ones, and then they go down to gradually uh, members and orders, and you're all put in different rooms, and a man comes clinking along with spurs and says, it's going to be very easy, you're just going to have to... You're sta asked, pass you out, and you stand in front of um, the, the commander of something who's standing there, and then they make, you're going to take four paces forward, and she will shake your hand and put on your medals, and she will ask you two questions, and then it is your signal to retreat backwards. <laughs> <laughs> what were the questions? What, what, what questions are there? I can't remember the you questions. You can't remember? Okay. <laughs> Do, you, do the dames get to hang out? Do you know Dame Judy Dench? That's the only other dame that I, that yes, I know of. You I do know, know Judy, you do? yes. Wow, so there's like a dame... Well, they put you all together at different, different do's, you know, like um, when, we're, when we go to various important things, there might be Paul McCartney, there might be Mick Jagger, with their lords on their name, on the, or sirs. Wow, <laughs> that's incredible. This is, I feel like we have, uh, we have royalty right here on the show tonight. Yeah. This, is, this is amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, you, like I said in the intro there, you're credited with sort of putting the London fashion scene on the map in the 1970s, but how did you originally get into fashion design? Um, I went to the Royal College of Art where Hockney went, the painter, and um, when I left college, I thought I would teach uh, for two days a week and then do, do my textiles except that I couldn't convince anyone to buy my textiles and I didn't like teaching. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to go to show people my work and they'd say, oh, very nice, but it's too extreme. And one guy said, well, you're either going to fall flat on your face or get somewhere. So anyway, then um, I went to Carnaby Street and there were two fantastic girls called Fole Marion Fole and Sally Tuffin and they loved my work and I then organised getting it printed for their little outfits. This was in about, 19, what, about 1965. And, um, and then eventually I thought, I, I know how I want the prints to look myself, but I hadn't been trained to make dresses. So I thought, but the people who did dressmaking at college didn't look any more intelligent than I was. So. <laughs> So eventually, I put a collection together and I met two wonderfully mad Ukrainian models, American, and they said, you've got to come to America, you're going to make your fortune, you've got to come to America. Yeah. And I bought a ticket to come to New York, I hadn't met anyone. <laughs> and I had two letters of introduction and one was to American Vogue and Deanna Vreeland, this amazing, amazing head of American Vogue, photographed them immediately on Natalie Wood 
and then introduced me to Henry Bendel, and so I started selling in America and coming over here and selling wow. here. <laughs> is, is your outfit tonight, is that original? My outfit tonight is actually all my prints that I did for Valentino this season. Oh my God. <laughs> that is so cool. I also love the pink. I love the pink uh, hair, the pink ensemble. This, is this part of the, the punk rock? I know that you're a, sort of the princess of punk, as they say. Um, well, it's, it's quite, I don't mind the title. I mean, I've, um, uh, I've, yeah, I've been punk rock. Yeah, the high priestess, right? High priestess I've, of punk. I've been dyeing my hair since 19, about 1972. And I used to have it green then, and, but this, if anyone here's had green hair, it tends to look like old straw soon, you know, the sun gets yeah. at it. I actually had uh, um, dark blue hair in high school. Really? Oh, blue's lovely. I, I got to see that. It's not easy to keep, you see. They haven't perfected I, yeah. those colors so much. It didn't look good. <laughs> and Yours then, looks much better. And You're then pink. I went to China, and, I, and this was in 19, um, 1980, I think it was, when they just opened up China, and there was... I suddenly came back and I thought, oh, red china, and I dyed my hair pink, and it's been pink ever since. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> wonderfully mad. Uh, I like that phrase, wonderfully mad. I feel like that should be the next uh, collection, you know? Um, remember that. Remember that, wonderfully mad. I like that. So you have uh, all kinds of famous uh, clients, and in the past you've had uh, Princess Diana. I think we have a photo uh, with her. You designed her dress, and um, look at that. That's a beauty. Oh, I see. Oh, yes, yes. See that? <laughs> but also uh, Jackie Kennedy, Elizabeth Taylor, Diana Ross, all these people. And it's it's amazing. And Freddie Mercury. Wow. <laughs> you, but not a dress for Freddie Mercury. Right? No, he, the wonderful, the picture they always remember of with the wonderful pleated sleeves. And of, that, of him, it looks very good. And uh, Diana Ross, I heard she, you had a, an incident with Diana Ross as Oh, well. that's one of my favorites. Um, I had a shop, <laughs> I had a shop in London and she was doing her one man show. This would be in the, um, probably, I think it was the early 80s. Or, no, maybe it's the late, sem late sem mid 70s. And it was a time that I was wearing lots of exotic turbans as well and she came into my shop and she bought a whole red outfit, gorgeous, pleated, wonderful pleated um, jacket and everything. And, um, and I, I met her and went to the end of her, sh you know, in the show afterwards to congratulate her. Anyway, I'm driving in Beverly Hills with my girlfriend and we see Diane Ross getting out of her car and going into her, her, her house. And my girlfriend says, come on, go and say hello, you know her. So anyway, I get out of the car and I take two or three steps onto her lawn and this very cold voice says, if you come one step nearer, this garage door will be shut down on top of you. So oh my God. I get back into my car. Now, at that time, I had green hair with little feathers stuck on the end <laughs> and high white boots. And of course, that isn't what she saw when, when I, sh I fitted her in my shop. So, <laughs> so she didn't recognize so you? So the next morning I come down, she didn't recognize me and we drove off and my girlfriend said, what did happen? I said, shut the door. Oh, it was when I'd just done my things with punk and the safety pins. So the next morning I, my, I go downstairs and my girlfriend's sitting up with her husband. They were woken up at three in the morning by Dinah Ross who had phoned all around to find out, because she, must, she was recording with Barbara Streisand at the time, and I'd fitted Barbara Streisand in London, so she must have said, this weird girl came along, and she had green hair, <laughs> hair feathers on the end. And, and so she came round and had breakfast with us. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's, that's a lot better than her shutting the garage shutting door on Shutting the you. garage door yeah. down on me. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you about this textile design. I know that um, this is sort of a revolutionary thing of using the textiles to determine the shape of the garments. Is that correct? Yes. I always say that textile designers are the, the hidden people in the industry because if you go and buy a wonderful Chanel suit and it's a gorgeous weave, some invisible weaver designed that, but the credit goes only to the person who makes the clothes. So that... And often it's the whole thing. If you think of what you wear and the gorgeousness of a print and what it can do. So 
I've done all sorts of things where you cut around the shape of the print and it makes. So you create the print, the design first, and then and tailor then the garment to the fit the design. Afterwards, that's yes. incredible. That's that's I think that's unique, isn't it? Well, I like to think it is. Yes, I think you, <laughs> I think you are unique. How? So let me let me ask you again. How how did you get this sort of moniker as the high priestess? of punk. You mentioned briefly there the... Well, I, um, I had this very elegant shop in, in Knightsbridge, in, in Mayfair, and I thought suddenly, I've been known for my prints, why don't I design something with wonderful holes and beaded safety pins and make the dress do all sorts of exotic things? And my partner, who was a lot older than me at the time, my age, but then, and she said, well, you're going to have to do something dramatic in the window. Well, of course, no one came into the shop. So we had to change back to the printed shift on dresses again. No. Oh. <laughs> so uh, we, we're unfortunately running out of time, but I wanted to at least plug what you have coming up. I know that you have uh, the Port Elliot Festival. You're also re-releasing a number of archive collections through matchesfashion.com. Matches.com, yes. So people can go and see the classic designs. On and they are website. Repackaging, yes. selling the... Classic designs that you created again on We'd be recreating matchesfashion.com. Yes. That's amazing. Um, thank you so much for being here. We, I, I wish we had more time, but you're so wonderful. It was really lovely to meet an actual dame. Great to be here. Thank you so much. We'll be right back right after this. Please stick around. <laughs>